we have been looking at issues concerning COVID-19. We've been looking at some topical issues um, regarding health, education, and some other um, concerns from experts as well. Today on AE Talks, we will be looking at the gender-related issues in the fight of COVID-19 pandemic, and we'll be hosting one of our gender advocates on the continent. We'll be privileged to look at some of the gender gaps in the entire discussion, and um, you can just catch us on our social media platforms. It is Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube as well. My name is Chrissy Sam, and I want to welcome all of you. We'll go for a short break. We'll be back. Welcome back from the break. If you just tuned in, you are still watching AU Television, and this is a AU Talks. We are discussing the gender-related issue in the fight of COVID-19, and we are privileged to be hosting Dinah Adiko, and she is a gender and inclusion consultant who has been working in the space of gender-related issues in Ghana and in Africa. And today we will want to understand the gap in terms of gender in the entire discussion of COVID-19. Hello, if you can hear me, you are welcome to AU Talks, Diana. Thank you very much, Kwesi. It's a pleasure to be here. So we want to understand how the feeling is. Um, are you in the best of health? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, it's a difficult time, no doubt about that. Mm. But uh, we thank God that we have the opportunity to be in the comfort of our homes and to ensure yeah. our own protection and the protection of our family. So I am in the best of health. I wouldn't pretend that it has not been overwhelming mm. having to manage work from home and do everything virtually when we're used to doing a lot of things face to face. So mm. it's been a little overwhelming trying to navigate the whole technology thing mm. and getting everything done smoothly has been difficult, but we are we would better have that than risk our lives out there spreading the disease or contracting the disease. So I would say on a very positive note, I'm in the best of health. Oh, wow, that's very good to know. But I want to understand, do you think that the entire discussions, the fight, all the protocols that we've adhered to, do you think we are on track? As a country or in the world? Well, as a country, as a continent, and globally as, as well. As a country, you know, this is th this thing caught everybody pants down. Yeah. There was no anticipation. There were no expectation. We all have been caught, found wanting. Mm. The world at large, from where it began, China up to Europe and the America, you would admit that every all leaders have been caught unaware of God, mm. and so it's been. It's been one day at a time for a lot of countries mm. trying to ensure that they have the measures in place to safeguard or to protect the health and well-being of their people. Some countries may have done much better than others. You give credit to New Zealand, you give mm. credit to Germany, mm -hmm. and you say that they seem to be a bit more ahead of the virus or the disease. Mm. And would admit that some, and we think South Korea and China too have really struggled and fought but they've come up well. Um, if you compare to maybe America and the UK and other European countries, you say that they probably could have done better. Mm. And coming to Ghana, we got on board. I say African countries were lucky mm. to have gotten this disease a bit later than the rest of the, the than advanced country, okay. where we think that the advanced country may have tried a number of things. They have tried an ed, of which we have the opportunity to learn Absolutely. and then make ours right okay. but we also know that we are challenged by resources our systems are already inadequate mm -hmm. our healthcare system is inadequate our welfare system social welfare system is equally inadequate mm -hmm. a point of reference for example is when we were sharing food to vulnerable people mm -hmm. it just was a scary scene where we think we're putting a lot more people at risk so it is not the best but one thing we appreciate is that our country and our leaders are doing they are, uh, they are not treating this dismissively at all. Okay. You can see that there's a lot of 
consciousness on their part. They are focusing. Uh, corporate Ghana supported in raising enough funds for the COVID fund. Mm. And uh, we're thinking, I think they're trying. It is not the best, and not only on the part of government, but on the part of citizens as well. Mm -hmm. We're struggling to adhere to the protocol. There are yeah. so many people who are doubting if this, if this virus is even real. Mm. Many people have said that they don't think this virus is real. And some have said they think this virus has been there with us forever. Mm. It is only now coming to our notice. Others have said blatantly that we've had other disease killing people in Africa, like malaria. Mm -hmm. And if we do not panic at the thought of malaria, there's no need to panic about coronavirus. What does that tell you? It tells you that for such mentality, these individuals are not going to adhere to the protocols in ways that will protect them and protect others. Mm. So it's been it's a mixed bowl of everything. But I just think that our leaders will continue to pick the signals for countries that are doing better mm. so that we also can do. But we are also grateful to God that the, it seems the severity of the virus, it's too probably early to call yet, but the severity of the virus on Africa is not as hard as compared to the other parts of, the, parts world. of the world. And some are crediting this to the weather. Yes, to the weather. Mm. We know that heat and sun rays destroys the virus. So maybe if somebody leaves the virus on the surface, for example, it's easy for it to burn out before mm -hmm. the next person shows up on that surface to pick it. So we notice that infection rate and spread is lower. But mm -hmm. we are saying maybe we are misleading ourselves and mm -hmm. maybe science will show that as the months or the weeks go by, that is when our infection rate will rise and that this argument would have been nothing. You mm -hmm. remember initially there was this argument that the African DNA does not permit the of the virus. We got yeah. that wrong. So we may be getting the issue about the sun rays wrong. So our whole point is let us continue to be careful until all of this is over. Then we'll have the benefit of hindsight to say that indeed, these were the things that worked for Africa and these were the things that worked against Africa, worked against the world. So I still insist that we should be careful. We know the protocols. Yeah. We know the protocols and okay. we should be fine. Great. Interesting. Let, let's look at another dynamics. You know the entire discussion we have left the issues related to gender and there are a lot of myths and a lot of uh, misconceptions but once you're an expert would want to go much more deeper into into it for example when you look at the death toll and then um, you look at the rate at which men are contracting the virus um, is quite higher than women and more men are dying out of the virus as compared to um, to women, and this is not only in Ghana, Africa, but globally. Do you think there are any sociological explanations? Are there cultural? Are there medical? Are there any scientific explanations as to why more men are contracting the disease and are dying out of it, as compared to uh, other counterpart females? Hello, Diana. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah. Hi. Yes. Diana, can you hear me? But I think that, yeah, it played against us again. So can you please, you were asking the question when it, yes. I got disconnected. Can you exactly. please say the question again? All right. So I was asking, um, is there any biological, medical, social, cultural, scientific explanations as to why men are contracting the disease and dying out of it um, as compared to women? Once you're an agenda um, expert, is there any explanation? Um, we have looked. I have. I am not a scientist. I have very little understanding of how science works. I, even though I, I do appreciate the interpretation we get, I have looked out for research mm. that shows that the the person in a woman has any biological explanation or scientific explanation. So far, no research has est been established on that, and you would appreciate that everything is new. So the scientists are working around the clock to give an 
asked a number of interpretations. So, so far, there's no biology to say that there's a reason why men are more infected due to their their hormones or makeup or anything as compared to women. So, we are still waiting. I read, I exactly, we've not been able to see anything. I read somewhere that said that maybe the hormones of women, uh, uh, their monthly cycle and hormones could give them an advantage. But it was a raw speculation and it has no um, proof. So that um, research or that report seems to beg for further investigation or research into that. So we don't have any scientific or biological explanation yet. However, what we have is probably a soci sociological inter explanation. And that is looking at lifestyle. And I noticed in your intro, you made reference to possibility of lifestyle informing this practice. Mm. And sociologically, you say that men and women, through our society expectation of what we should do, have um, different responses to things. You will notice, for example, when you talk about lifestyle, men drink more alcohol mm. than women do. Men smoke more than women do and this is not only a ghana issue around the world more men smoke than more women smoke and so and we know that one of the predisposing factor for vulnerability to contracting this virus is if you smoke and drink alcohol so oh. that alone pre-exposes men when the virus come close that they could contract it. We have been made to understand that you could be exposed to the virus, but you may not contract it. Like any other disease or virus, it's okay. not automatic that so long as you come into contact with it, you will contract the virus. That's why couples stay home, one person has it, the other does not. Mm. So if you, are, you drink alcohol and you smoke, your risk of getting the infection is very high. And if your risk of getting the infection is high, you are equally high for death or for not surviving it so just the, the the fact that your body composition is not strong enough to fight the virus also mm -hmm. makes your chances of survival a bit lower than the other person who was originally stronger and could not contract it so that is one thing one thing about lifestyle mm. then there's another thing about uh, our life as men and women that is we find interesting in this conversation where women are more have been brought up and note these are not biological arrangements okay. women have been brought up to be more receptive to domestic stuff things as basic as washing your hands mm -hmm. as basic as carrying sanitizers men don't find space in their bags or, or, or pockets to put sanitizers mm. women often carry along handbags and big purses where they can put soup sanitizers even bottles of water, where they are confound water, wanting they will wash their hands. Mm. So from time immemorial, men did not quite join the hand washing wagon. It was something that women did all the time. So this time again, it looks like a party that a man will stay. If you do not have you, men don't carry wipes. When we go for parties and they need wipes, they ask women. Mm -hmm. Though this is not a biological thing, we've been conditioned that we can go along with bags as big as though we were going taking our babies for weighing <laughs> at the hospital and have everything in it. Mm. But men, it, it, it's, it's laughable to see mm. a man walking around with big bags. Mm -hmm. and not so in this scenario, it works against men. And you have a culture, for example, when you come home, part of the protocol is to take off your shoes, take off your clothes, dry them and quickly take a bath. Mm. Let's start a conversation about who has been trained to take their bath. From childhood, our parents, especially our mothers, taught girls to take bath more often than boys. And every day for the, the average Ghanaian individual, women have frequent baths than men. You would admit to that. So if one of the protocol is to continue to take your bath, mm. then you can imagine who would be found wanting. Again, mm -hmm. that is a challenge for them. In the home, you will notice that the responsibility of setting the systems in place, where are your sanitizers, where are the, wash the hand washing buckets, where is the flowing water, all those things. Again, because women have been brought up to face up to domestic activities, women are doing better in setting those systems up. In fact, and they are struggling to get men in their household to remember to 
to take off their shoes, to wash their hands, their hands frequently. So mm. again, this is one point that works against um, uh, men. We cannot shy away from the fact that men uh, uh, do a lot of what we call the front front line jobs. Mm. So they are in the they are in the police, they are in the military, they are the doctors. A lot more men are doctors than women, even though in some countries the statistics are closing up. Yeah. Again, if we are saying people who are the front line are at higher risk, there is that opportunity again for exposure. So all those things put together, they may look tiny, little, little, but it actually is the work maybe working against why the statistics are showing so and you know men again have been encouraged to be masculine machoism mm -hmm. so oh, this is uh, and they are not afraid raising shoulders and walking gallantly to show everybody that it's women it's weakness it's weakness to be to panic about this virus and be paranoid it's you are weakling men cannot be weakling and, par and be paranoid so they can't join all the women who are extra careful and washing their hands five times in an hour they have to be and so they are risk so in my understanding some literature that have emerged are suggesting that this could be the reasons why more men are infected but again i said we don't know yet we can okay. only so speculate you made mention of an interesting fact which has to do with um the the frontline workers uh, for example we know that when you pick the medical staff the men are picking the virus more than the women. When you look at the security forces, um, the men are picking, even those uh, who are also on the frontline duties, the men are picking it more than yes. the women. Um, and in yeah. terms of yeah. who is the breadwinner now, men are going out, women are going out to work, and I won't say the rate is the same. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, it's still fascinating that beyond that, we still have more of the men picking it up. Yes, because you see, the, the explanation I gave you are more of the men washing their hands. Are and they feeling the free to be afraid enough? Mm. Adhering to the protocols. Mm. They, it, it, just like they would do in their home. It, it, you are not a different man in your home than the, the, the man in the office or at mm. the workplace. Apart from the fact that the population of men and women in those career or jobs mm -hmm. are, are already disproportional, there also the risk of them not adhering all the same. I've heard doctors who say this condition can be treated. And note, there was a lot of indication initially that for the, the virus only harms older people and senior citizens for young mm. people like yourself and myself there's a high possibility that we are going to breeze through and come out and not die mm. so quickly you know men by the whole um uh, infrastructure of masculinity allow mm. for men to quickly jump on that and feel cool about it and not feel threatened i know a male doctor who says oh even if you get this virus you are likely to survive it so it's not a big deal it's one of those things so those um, mindsets can really put you at higher risk than others. Okay. So it appears the men are more of the doubting Thomases. That is very interesting. But let's look at another um, yes. aspect of this. But it, don't you, is, isn't that what <laughs> life is? Life is like that. Men are more of the doubting Thomases and they are more of the, the tough boys and the, mm -hmm. the big boys and the, 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 the hard boys that women are. And that has been the arrangement. So this time around, the risk is higher. So we'll come back to your final words and then you'll give us what we must do. To, I'm not saying we should be able to bridge the gap in terms of the contraction or the death rate, but what men must do more um, mm -hmm. to limit the rate at which they are contracting the virus. But uh, one key aspect which is very important to us in this entire discussion mm -hmm. has to do with the effect. Because if more men are dying out of the virus, and we know specifically on our continent um, and globally as well, a lot of the men are the breadwinners. Yeah. What do you think uh, the socioeconomic impact or effect um, of this whole pandemic on the family system and then our society as well? You can look at all the various issues um, in terms of gender and then the effect of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. The effect. Well, okay. So um, we, I think statistics is drifting from the fact that men are the breadwinners mm. we're having women also winning bread for their family but they may not necessarily be in the formal sector Absolutely. we have a lot of women in the informal sector 
and indeed that is why they're able to provide the Ausa cocoa and the kose every morning Mm. Uh, as compared to those who earn monthly income. So a lot of women are taking care and feeding their families much more than we're willing and ready to acknowledge. Mm. Back in the year when women were asked to stay home, these days everybody is out there doing it differently but earning an income. So that's, that is one issue we should uh, put a hand on. When we're talking about more men dying, in as much as the statistics is showing more men dying, uh, we are, our men are not being wiped away, fortunately. Even in the heavily endemic countries, our mm. men are not being wiped away. The Absolutely. statistics of death rate is actually less than, it's about between 8 or 10 percent. That's really mm. low. I think mm. globally, how many people have died? Uh, something thousand, I just, a hundred thousand. How many people have died globally? So if you look at the death and the, percent, the difference is 6 is to 4, I think. It's between yeah. 6 is to 4. So it's not that our men are being wiped away, so no fears. We, can't, we shouldn't be alarmed about that. And we mm. believe that sooner than later, we'll find a way of treating it, even if we can't cure it, treating it when people are ill, that they will not die. So the death rate, even though high, does mm. not wipe our men away. We shouldn't be afraid. Mm. With regards to the effect it has on the economy, and whether it's men or women, the truth is, for now, people are being laid off. Men and women are being laid off. Mm. Men are losing their jobs as well, and women are. If you say women are in the informal sector, for example, sal women run hairdressing salons, and they mm. do nails, and they do the sew. Mm. I don't think since 12 March, when we registered our first case, any woman in Ghana has gone to her seamstress to get measured to sew a dress. Mm -hmm. That business is almost on its knees those women are not going to be able to feed for the next time many months. For those who have taken loans to run their business, to invest in machines and things, you can imagine how scared they are. Take the hairdressers. The saloons are almost always empty. Mm. What are you going to do there? And then you take the traders, petty traders. Women do a lot of petty trade. If you go to Makola, now you see a lot more women. Go to the market where food stuff are being sold. Even though we, even in COVID-19, we eat the patronage of market staff has reduced remarkably yeah. the every day i want to try this i want to get excited about shopping has gone down significantly and what does that do to the people who do that trade their income level also drops remarkably so if we're talking about stimulus packages in this country there has to be a very well crafted understanding of how to support um, women in that in the, in the trade and the economy industry. Mm. Take our Kayayo, for example. You know, there was a big issue about Kayayo, our young sisters, who, uh, who are headquarters in the market. Yeah. And when the lockdown was rearing its head, some of them fled, and we all saw the drama that ensued on that. Mm. What is the kind of business they are into, and how do they feed themselves? So though, if we are not careful, we are going to rush quickly to the formal sector, where people have, mainly men have certificates, and can easily get a job when the, market, the business, uh, the economy opens up. Mm. You understand? So when the economy opens up, most of these people are likely to go back to their jobs because mm. labor will be needed anyway. But now, as it is now, both men and women, I think, are being affected, and it's a huge thing. And note again, because of the domestic the sociological arrangement for the roles between men and women, women are more and more responsible for catering for their families. How mm. do the children who are not going to school and are eating seven times a day, how are they being fed? Mm. Who is making sure that they are being fed? Somebody has to make sure, whether there's, daddy has a job or not, there's somebody there who, who looks in their eyes and knows that she must feed them. And that person is extremely burdened. Some daddies are at job posts. They are not with their children. They are happy to be um, at job location outside the home than to be home so that they can't follow all the pressures of what is happening now. So there, there is a lot of burden on women, even economically. Mm -hmm. Even economically. You have to ensure that you have en enough electricity credit to make sure that the, the room is not hot, to make sure that TV and light bulbs are on. And then there's a whole new phase of schools going virtual. virtual, mm -hmm. uh, virtual. Virtual, so yeah. virtually, how are we setting our children up for them to study? They are using Zoom, they are using Google Classroom, they are using WhatsApp, they are using Telegram. Who is making sure that those things are running? I bet you in 80% of the households is the women who are at the forefront of that. And some of it comes with a lot of economic demands. How do we navigate that? So again, it brings a burden on some people. I will not steal away from the role of our daddies. 
the daddies of children are doing their best but in a lot of circumstances if it is breaking the person who holds it is the mother and that is what society expects her to do so she doesn't relent on it so these are the ways the the okay. and then there's one aspect that many people are not paying attention to you know when the virus broke people said uh, there, there was a request on us that don't go to the hospital ordinarily except mm. it's a critical situation you can go and refill your prescription drugs at the pharmacy but do not show up at the hospital people are home and they are ill and believe it or not there are some people who are ill but they are afraid to go to the hospital for fear that when they show up at the hospital they mm. are going to encounter COVID-19 so they are not going there mm. who is caring for the sick and who cares for the sick for our parents, fathers and mothers who are down with stroke now and they are home, who is caring for them? Somebody is looking, out, looking after them and that person, you can, your guess is as right as mine, is the woman in the house. So there's a lot of or unspoken be burden that comes to women. It could be a man, but you know very few. If your, your, your parent was ill now, I mm -hmm. bet you it's either your sister who was going to come in for caregiving or it would be your wife. Mm. You would take her to your, 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 your parent to your house, but believe it or not, the morning bathing, feeding, changing, checking for medication, you, most men would not show up to do that. That does not say some men don't do. So okay. that is how the face of COVID-19 plays out on women. But who is going to tell our story? Everybody mm. thinks it's business as usual. Now you have to cook three times a day. And nobody, even just deciding on a menu, can be extremely a daunting task, but nobody is going to be bothered about that. And mind you, many of us mothers who are home now actually still have our career that we are running virtually. Okay. But you are still supposed to be able to cook for your family and then still submit your report and hold your Zoom meeting and make sure everybody is doing fine. And Questy, mm -hmm. it is such a tedious time for us. And it can be mentally yeah. draining. Great. There's a little interesting dimension, but we will discuss this on, on this segment. I think the next segment, because we've heard, uh, we need to really verify that in terms of unwanted pregnancies and related issues with the lockdown and then this whole COVID pandemic. But let me take your final words, especially with regards to your introduction, where we made mention of the fact that we have a lot of men um, contracting the disease or the virus because of our lifestyle and some um, attitudes that men do have. In your final word, what do you think we should do? Hello, can you hear me? A bit yes. Messy. All right, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great. So I asking, think any time we try mm -hmm. to assist, yeah. Yes, Go I'm ahead, asking please. of your, your final words with regard to your previous statement, um, explaining why you think more men are contracting the virus as compared to women. And you made mention of attitudinal and some lifestyle issues. What should yeah, we do? Yeah. What advice do you have for men? And let me add some women as well. Yo, yes, Oli. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I would say that so long as, as far as we know it now, we don't know. Maybe later the information will change. But as far as we have it now, adhere to the protocol. Stay, as, stay at home as much as you can. This mm -hmm. is not the time to take your car to the mechanic shop or to go to... Uh, I'm also kind to go and look for car parts because your offices stay at home and work from home. This is not the time to catch up for drink cups and to continue to have a bottle of beer or a scotch. It is not safe. We know that smoking puts our health at risk ordinarily and even so with COVID-19. So it may be time to search our souls as men particularly that you drop Act, behavior that puts you at risk, reduce the alcohol intake, increase your healthy eating and exercising. Everybody, this is, if, uh, you know, as you do domestic chore, you're actually exercising. But for men who stay at home, they don't do domestic chore, they don't move, they sit on behind the computer for hours on end and mm. it increases your risk. We need to exercise, we need to walk. Take your families on a walk. You may think you are doing it for the family, but you're also doing it for yourself. Mm. Reduce um, um, eating of unhealthy food. And yesterday our president said we should increase contemporary intake in Dawa Dawa and a number of other things. So basically go on to a lot more vegetables, reduce the carbohydrates, reduce the mm. fat, and work out a bit more, you'll be fine. I also, wash your hands. I mean, th this is not the time for show of masculinity and machoism. You try it and you put yourself and your family at risk. 
don't meet up with your friends you can never tell from people's forehead if they have the virus or not some people will be asymptomatic through the cycle of the virus and they may never know they got okay. the virus so if you go hanging out with them and you have pre-existing conditions what are the risk of your infection you understand mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. let us adhere to the pro let's be paranoid like women are let's join the women in this and let's see whether this, the the will not come back to this virus but All again right. uh, let's go away with fear and then okay. probably we should be fine okay now in one minute what major advocacy are you putting out there as, as a gender advocate The, uh, I think many when when the issue about stimulus package and support to vulnerable people came up, mm. we were for that. and I still think that it is important uh, coming from the women's perspective and from an equality perspective that if there are any stimulus packages for people to mm. support and sustain their businesses, we should also think about businesses that are headed by women or managed by women or businesses that seek to serve the women population because those businesses are going down. How do you support the informal sector, for example, as a government to ensure that people who run those sectors still have food on the table for themselves and their children mm. and to ensure that their business are back on their feet when the crisis is over? I think the conversation about stimulus package is targeting well-organized, well-structured business. And when you go there, you are going to find mainly men and what happens to women. So again, you, if you want the, and the informal sector drives the economy so actively mm. that if we lose sight of it now, it will come back to bite us later. It is really critical that somebody pays attention to that and, and, and make sure that we don't slip through the cracks and get quenched out completely. So th that, that's quite a, a big deal. Vulnerable groups, um, persons, for example, who the Kaya is, people sell on the street, our brothers and sisters who sell on the street and all of those, they also need some kind of support. The last time we tried to give them ordinary food, I think we sucked at it and we shouldn't mm. repeat that. So since the lockdown has been over, nobody extends food to them. But we also know that these are people whose business don't move anymore. So how do they feed themselves? Okay. Ordinary, on, on, in our local parlance, we say these are hand to mouth people. How are they feeding? What are they doing? How are they managing? How are they getting the necessary sanitizers? And uh, do they even understand how the length and breadth of this disease? Or all they know is that it's a disease. I remember in the market, in the initial stages, some market women were interviewed, and one of them said, oh, coronavirus will not come here because there's nobody here from Italy. And mm -hmm. even if it comes to us, we shall carry it to sanitizers. Mm -hmm. So it tells you how much misinformation is there, was there, and still is there. And how much, again, we have mis explained this virus that people are doing treatment in their home. People are also um, um, preventing it with so all sorts of weird things. Mm. And so we need to continue the education until the last whistle. So um, that, that would be the angle I take it from. And I would, I, would, I would hazard a conversation around issues of persons with disability and how this is, how are they moving? Mm. We are saying that we should have restricted movement. When you go to places and you see the Veronica bucket that are set up in front of shops and banks, the height of the Veronica bucket alone makes it difficult for somebody in a wheelchair to access and wash Process. their hands. Okay. But we don't think about this. We don't think about these arrangements when we are putting measures in place mm -hmm. for prevention mm -hmm. or for cure. All so right. we don't wonder how these people function. And I think all of those, we have to have a broader conversation. And I really congratulate AATV for setting this up. And I, I hope it goes very far. And a lot of people share their experiences about it. And I, I, I say, please don't give up. Uh, keep, in spite of the social distancing and all the technology hitches, you have done your best. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. We believe that this will go a very long way to educate our constituents and then also our viewers as well. Definitely, we'll come back to you for more of your uh, your intellect. We are so much grateful. Chrissy, did you hear that more and more women are complaining of being sexually abused in this COVID-19? Our our sisters who are doing domestic help work, mm. uh, and nieces and yes. uh, who are staying so, with uncles. Exactly. Step so, are all sexually abused. We are going to set up another conversation 
on the abuse yeah. um, with respect to gender because yeah. some men also complain of being abused by their wives. So we'll look at that dynamics and also look at the issues of unwanted pregnancies throughout the lockdown. So I think um, that will be exactly. our, our next conversation. We'll call you on that so that you share your views and your thoughts with us as well. Thank you very much. Percy. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time and then uh, your knowledge as well. Great. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been AU Talks. We're looking at the gender perspective of our um, strategies in combating COVID-19 in Africa and globally as well. Don't forget that you can just always get us on our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on YouTube and Facebook. My name is Chrissy Sam. Thanks for watching.